Hi everybody, welcome back to uh, Morning Glory. And today I am going to do something I've not done before. I'm going to attempt transition pictures on the fly. I'm going to do them in front of you now. I will probably have to edit because these things take a very long time to do sometimes. Uh, but I'm going to do it on the fly. And the person who I chose to do, or who chose me really, was Eddie Van Halen of the band Van Halen obviously, uh, which he formed in the early 70s with his brother, Alex. I honestly don't know anything about Van Halen beyond what I had to look up to do these pictures. Like, I needed a picture of him. I didn't know what he looked like. And uh, it turns out that he was one of the most successful guitarists and most talented guitarists of all all time beloved within the profession had uh, millions and millions of fans uh, but led a rock star life from a very young age he was dutch i think and then his family moved to california uh, where he didn't speak english uh, and he always felt like an outsider when he was young uh, but he took to the rock star life very early on, apparently. Uh, he was smoking heavily and taking drugs and drinking or whatever. So that later on in life, it really took its toll on him. He had had part of his tongue removed because of oral cancer. And he even had a divorce because his wife at the time couldn't take the fact that he kept on smoking, even though he had oral cancer. So he was in a very bad way, and he died, I believe, in 2020 of a lot of things. Some places say he had a stroke. Others say it was of cancer. I'm not absolutely sure what it was, but that's how and when he died. Now, the other interesting fact about this, other than the fact that I really don't feel as though I chose to do this guy, he doesn't interest me at all. Uh, I know nothing really about his music. I don't think I've ever heard his music. I may be wrong about that, but I've never heard it. Uh, but the other interesting thing about him, for me, is that he was married to the actress Valerie Bertinelli. She was the one who divorced him when he got oral cancer because he wouldn't quit smoking. And... Uh, he was in rehab and stuff, and uh, I think it just broke up the marriage. But uh, Valerie Bertinelli is somebody I came across, not only on TV. She was in Hot in Cleveland and uh, a show I didn't watch called Touched by an Angel, but that was very, very popular. I think she's won a couple of Golden Globes in her time. But uh, I used to go to Los Angeles Zoo. Every year. I'm not a big fan of zoos, but somebody was taking me. It would be rude to say no. Uh, they have a thing called the Beastly Ball, and every year I would go to the Beastly Ball with this person. They would buy a couple of tables at this event. It was a fundraiser, and there'd be a silent auction and tons of food all over the zoo. You could walk around the pathways, and there were food stations. I think they probably still have the event, actually. And then there'd be dessert tables and drinks places. It was all free if you were a guest. Um, because I have a sort of Victorian orphan mentality perhaps because I was brought up just after World War II, uh, because I have that mentality, I'm never slow to say yes to free food and basically to gorge myself on whatever is there. So I was at one of these tables and getting up probably for my fifth course or sixth course to go and get some more. And behind me was a solitary figure. The other guests at the table had got up and walked away and they were talking and stuff, but this solitary figure eating. And it was Valerie Bertinelli. I recognized her from the television. She caught my eye, and I smiled, and she smiled. She was halfway through eating something. And as well as saying, yeah, yeah, I like to eat too. I think she even has uh, programs on the Food Network. Uh, I think she's really into food in a big way. But despite the fact that we had that interest, in my case, compulsion, I thought something else 
there was something else and I never forgot that moment when I caught Valerie Bertinelli's eye. I got up, I walked away and that was it. We smiled and that was the end of that. But there was something about that moment and I have no idea. I didn't know that she'd been married to Eddie Van Halen. But now I get this constant nagging at me, which has gone on for about a year from somebody, perhaps Eddie Van Halen, saying, I want to be done. I want to be done. Please do, Eddie Van Halen. So uh, in the interest of full disclosure, just to make sure I wasn't wasting my time here, I went into the energy a couple of days ago and had a look around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this happens and that happens. And that gave me something to go at today. But other than that, I'm going to do it uh, live now and we'll wander around and see what happens in his energy. It's nice to know I have his permission. Okay, so Eddie Van Halen. Let me have a think about that. Um, the first thing that comes is not a figure. Normally I see little figures or something. I see the person. The first thing that happens is that there's a sudden splotch on a wall. Like if you threw paint at a wall. Um, the wall is curved and there's a splotch. Given that we're talking about transitions, I wonder if that's his diagnosis. Because it just it just stays on the wall, um, and the wall is curved, and it goes around and around, and then down. Oh, you know what this reminds me of? Actually, it reminds me of what are they called? A hopper? Is that a hopper that they put grain in? It's metal and smooth with smooth sides. And as I go around it, there's a ton of... This is really, really odd. There's a ton of grain. There's grain in the hopper. And it's going down a chute. Um, it's going down a chute slowly. This may have been his dying process. Actually, it's slow and uh, steady. Um... It's a bit like when you see salt go through uh, an egg timer, uh, through one of those things. It's slowly going down the chute and disappearing until the last few grains go. And it's very short um, passage, like crossover, really, because it took so long before he crossed over. I guess there must have been um, steadying... Uh, increasing um, debilitation as he went along. Um, maybe. I don't know. But anyway, it was taking its toll. Then it goes down the chute. And it immediately, it's so short, immediately pours out the other side into that, um, into that kind of meet and greet cave I always see. It's metaphorical. It doesn't exist. Uh, but it helps me understand what they're feeling. Uh, out comes the grain... Oh, and there he is. There he is. He tumbles out of the... He was in the grain. He was in the grain. And he tumbles out. You know what it looks like? Oh, I don't know if you remember this, but back in the day... I don't think they still do this, but back in the day, like the 60s, you'd buy uh, cereal, boxes of cereal, and they would have a free gift in them like a plastic monkey or uh, a card from your favourite TV series with a picture of something on it. Um, I, I think that later on they put them in plastic, but I don't remember them being in plastic when I was a kid. I think they were just, like, there. <laughs> they just stuck them in the cereal. Um, but when you poured the cereal out, they, uh, the, the free gift, the little plastic monkey or whatever it was, would fall out into your cereal bowl. And that's what this reminds me of. That's what this reminds me of. He fell out of the grain. What I thought was him wasn't him. And the floor of the metaphorical symbolic cave is um, is covered in is not grain. It's covered in sawdust. 
is covered in sawdust, like a circus ring. And he's pushing aside, he's pushing aside the grain, looking for something under it. And there are lights under the floor. But not bright lights, they're just like dim lights, but shining upwards. Like spotlights, but sh I mean, I know he was a rock star and stuff, but these are like spotlights under the floor, shining upwards. And he's looking, pushing the sawdust aside, looking for these lights. It reminds me a bit of a disco. I've never been to a disco in my life, but uh, I saw Saturday Night Fever, and I assume that's what discos are like. There's lights under the floor. A bit like that. You know what it... I keep saying what it reminds me of, but what it reminds me of is of if, say, you've got a bishop who had been told that after he passed, he would be bathed in the light of Jesus, in the glory of God. And then he crossed over and found out that he wasn't bathed in the glory of God. And he was going, where? Where's the glory of God? Where? I, I was promised the light of Jesus. Where is the light of Jesus? It, kind of that sort of search, a little bit frantic, pushing, this, um, pushing the uh, sawdust aside. Huh. I mean, I, it almost, I don't know if he's a religious guy. I don't know if he actually had any faith whatsoever. He may have done, he may not, but... Um, uh, there was a sense in this of somebody who was looking for something they'd lost, something they thought they would find here, but they can't find it. It's not where they left it. It could be, if he was, say, for example, extremely egocentric, let's just say, hypothetically, I honestly don't know, but say he were egocentric, he might go, well, I've earned, I've earned... Um, a special welcoming committee he might say that or where is my reward for being a good person you know like a bishop looking for the glory of god or whatever but he didn't find anything just the lights it's like oh okay disappointing then he stands up and surveys his you know symbolic environment it's like oh okay there is this tunnel that I always see over there. Um, before he goes up the tunnel, I mean, there's nothing else here, here usually. Um, it's just the cave kind of thing, uh, shape. Um, but he goes down on his knees again. Oh, he doesn't walk up the tunnel. He goes up on his hands and knees as if saying, I thought I was great, but I know compared to you. If you were a religious person, I mean, this is terrible. If he's not, I'm not quite sure what this would be otherwise. Um, I know I was considered great, but I am great compared to, I'm not great compared to you. That kind of thing. Um, or just, I know my place. Or he was a humble person on the inside. Um... Because I've got a feeling that that sawdust that he fell out of represented everything he appeared to be. And when he tumbled out of it, like a gift in a breakfast cereal, when he tumbled out of it, that was the real person. And everything else was what people thought he was. And he was actually quite humble and nice on the inside. And maybe nice on the outside, I don't know. But uh, anyway, he goes up on his hands and knees as if he's suddenly willing to acknowledge his place in the universe. That's sort of how, what it felt like. How's, how's that feeling? Um, and when he gets to the top, oh, he's another of those who doesn't have that kind of trepidation about it. Um, in fact, he... He bathes in the light. He steps into the glow of this dome that I always see. There's like a, in the pictures, there's always a, like a dome at the top, or usually there is. 
Um, he steps into the glow of it and bathes in it like you would uh, a rainforest shower. Uh, I've seen a couple of other people do that, I think. Uh, just embracing their divinity, almost. Like, yes! I made it. This is what I thought it would be. I mean, he really felt... Um, I'm going to look such a fool if he's not in any way a man of faith or belief or whatever, but he felt... Um, he feels, uh, sorry, um, he feels, uh, he feels like he's washing in the, like, the radiance of, uh, oh, but, shut up, shut up, shut up, stop it. Um, uh, he feels like he's bathing in the radiance of, uh, of God. It's like the glory of everything that there is. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, this is perhaps not the one I should have done live. Um, he, he was at one with his divinity from the moment he went up the tunnel and realized his humbleness and his place in the universe. And... Uh, and felt the glory. It's like, takes your breath away. It's like... <gasps> that's what it feels like. And he was at one with it. There was no stepping into the light. Or there was no... Um, there was no... Um, questioning or curiosity about, what is this? Is this God? Is this heaven? It was just like, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. I made it. This is... This is proof of the existence of God. To me, Eddie Van Halen, this is to me. That's it. And he, uh, he disappeared into the light. Oh, my God. Wow! Wow! E. I haven't felt those kind of vibes for a very long time. There's so much doubt and cynicism and lack of interest and people fighting their ego stuff. And you would think a rock star would would be constantly trying to shed their ego, but it's like he shed it right at the start when the grain came out of the. The silo, the 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 um the shoot. It's like, yeah, now I am that little little plastic monkey. Great in life, accomplished in life, revered in life, on the mortal side. But a drop in the ocean on the eternal spiritual side. And uh same for all of us really we can just do the very best we can on this side inform um, honor our soul contract which he obviously did and then we resume our seat at the table on the formless ethereal side the cosmic side and uh, we're not special, we're not great. We're just a drop in the ocean. I feel like apologizing for this. I'm so sorry. I don't normally use it. At this particular point, normally when I did transitions, Olive would come and jump on the table and lean against my arm and uh, share, share the emotion with me, uh, which is why I miss her so much. Ah. Oh. There you go. There you go. That, I'm going to have to take a moment, I'm sorry. That is Eddie Van Halen's uh, transition pictures. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I'll see you soon.